Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you all right, Dr. Louver? Where am I? Oh, uh, buried alive in a cave-in, I'm afraid. And just as you'd press the button on the randomizer. Are you okay? Yes. Uh, I think so. Goodo, did you still have the randomizer print out in there? Yes. I've got it. Right, well, if you could just uh, pass that through to me. But I can't move. Oh, okay, don't worry. Let me just reach through the rocks here and grab it. Ah, ah okay. Ah, oh, well, today's episode is from Thunderbirds, and it's alias Mr. Hackenbacker. Suppose I better go and watch it then. Don't believe me. DTFN. Come back. <sighs> Nothing. So, welcome back to Thunderbirds on the randomizer with shot of the sky and the words alias Mr. Hackenbacker and um, yes uh, incredibly enough this episode continues our randomizer trend of watching the second series of Thunderbirds in reverse order is making final approach. which I swear is not planned it's just one of these odd little quirks of the randomizer this is now the fourth of the uh, six series two episodes that we've done. We've only got two left, Path of Destruction and Atlantic Inferno. I wonder if we will keep the, uh... Confirm undercut defect. The watching them in reverse order trend. Have completed crash drift. Or if we'll fail at the last hurdle. We'll have to wait and see for when those episodes turn up. Meanwhile... Emergency vehicles in position. We have a fairly grim opening. This is it. With this plane coming in to touch down at London Airport, we know it's London Airport because we've heard Commander Norman's voice. We've seen all the familiar stock footage of emergency vehicles rushing round and so forth, but this plane crash is uh, not going to end as well as the uh, the fire flash touchdown did. This is a plane on fire. It's made it down, but whoa! It's now in several bits. Gentlemen, the film you've just seen illustrates the greatest danger in any crash landing. Big explosions. Fire has have you found an answer with Skype? Yeah, apparently that is a real um, Our extensive test. piece of footage in the Thunderbirds universe. This uh, actual real plane disaster. Make a statement. All in good time. Now you might say that uh, you know that 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 is quite grim for Thunderbirds. Presumably a lot of people died there, but Mr. Hackenbacker should be arriving any minute now. You have to remember this is London Airport under the supervision of Commander Norman. Stuff like this happens two, three, four times a week. So they're used to it. Is Hiram K. Hackenbacker? Meanwhile, here's Brains. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Hackenbacker. Using the alias of Mr. Hackenbacker, and it is just an alias. There's no way the Brains, of, at least of the original series, is in any way named Hiram K. Hackenbacker. For starters, the title kind of gives that away, alias Mr. Hackenbacker. Uh, can I see your pass, please? You say it's the same security guard from Path of Destruction but also the fact that he and, and various other characters don't recognise the name or don't respond to the name throughout the, the rest of the, the story. Right ahead, sir. You'll find the other members of the party on Building 67, Observation Roof. Uh, As for other incarnations of brains, I can't really speak to those through um, a basic lack of interest, really, in the, the live-action and uh, CGI Thunderbirds. But uh, for the original series, at least, no. He's not Hiram K. Hackenbacker. But this is his latest invention. Uh, apparently, a plane. Well, there she is, the Skytrust. Mm, a very nice looking job, I may say, Sir Hackenbrook. Uh, the name is Hackenbacker, actually, sir. Uh, yes, 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 yes. And I can't really <laughs> take the whole credit, you know. I only designed some of its new experimental features. Ah. Yes, so he didn't design the whole plane, just, uh, just part of it. Which part, you may ask? The Skythrust calling control. Well, they're not going to tell us. Until much, much later. I'm ready to commence test routine. Permission to proceed, sir? Uh, yes, yes, of course, of course. Unless Mr. Hackenbrink has any further instructions for the pilot. Oh, I love this guy. This airport. I don't even know what this guy's job is. He's not part of the regular London airport structure, clearly. He's uh, Captain Saville. Go ahead. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let's line her up. 
and his job just seems to be to be one of those um, old-fashioned Biggles-ish, pilot-ish figures that you often get in the Thunderbirds aviation scene. And we're going to spend a lot of time this episode with this aircraft, the Skythrust. And I've got to say, it's never really... I've never really liked this this machine. She looks good. No, she doesn't. She's responding nicely. I think she looks a bit too boxy. Airspeed, 190 knots. Rotate. Rotate. Uh, yeah, I just I just don't like like the look of Skythrust in any way. Um, except for the lovely metallic chrome blue uh, of much of the body, which is... Uh, By Joe. Reminds me a lot of, uh, of Zero X, uh, particularly with the red stripes at random points on the body. Anyway, this plane has taken off. Leveling up. Truly a momentous occasion for all concerned. And the cockpit of the Skythrust is, I believe, I just couldn't fault that take a reworking of the um, Zero X cockpit. Behavior, though, as far as I am concerned, the full test of her abilities has yet to come. How do you mean, Mr. Hackenbacker? What's special about Skythrust that we haven't heard about? Yeah, I'm afraid we can't answer that yet. As Captain Savile said, Skythrust does incorporate certain new features, but we're not in a position to divulge these at present. You must wait until the end of the episode. When is the Skythrust due to come into service? Very soon indeed. There are a few formalities, certificate of airworthiness and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a formality. Don't worry about that. No. Make sure the thing's actually safe to fly, but that's a minor concern. It's minor. Our hear the latest from Ashton. All right, Hackenbacker. See you later. I like seeing as well in this um, observation deck at London Airport, lots of familiar puppets. The guy who drove the crab logger and um, Dick O'Shea from uh, Atlantic Inferno is there and uh, uh, one of the crew from Ocean Pioneer and uh, one puppet with a very big forehead who... Uh, Seems to have. Um, I think. I think he was in Thunderbird Six. Today at London International Airport. In the uh, very scary laughing scene. Rumor in aviation circles has it that the Skythrust has some revolutionary new features. But Hiram K. Hackenbacker, the brilliant American designer and a well-known man of mystery, Ooh. would give no information about the aircraft. He has played a large part in designing. Does it say when the Skythrust goes into service? I want to ride on it. My brains are staying on in Europe. It says, very soon it is expected that the first flight will be London bound from Paris. I love all this, um... Look! Oh, Penelope's on the cover of a magazine. That's something. Yeah, much more interesting than Brains' of stupid plane. Feature about Penelope. Oh, Everyone's good. in the news this week. Except me. Excitement in the Paris uh, Yeah, I love all this, so uh, Skythrust has some very revolutionary features. No one's going to talk about it. I would love it if people had built this plane up and then it was just... In a charity... I, I don't know, something about the bathroom was different, or they had a, a, a flavour of cookie that you couldn't get anywhere else or something. There you have Penelope and I always mentioning him. He's a favourite Paris designer. But here the story is going to take an abrupt turn from uh, exciting new aircraft developments. Yeah. I wonder what it'll be. To the Paris fashion scene. Yeah, poor old Tintin is, is now firmly relegated into Oh, wonderful dresses. Oh, cool disc jockey. He's minty. Rather than, you know, the intelligent engineer scientist she was in the first series, now she just sits there and reads magazines about her friend, because her friend wouldn't dream of inviting her along to meet this man that they apparently both talk about all the time. Francois Lemaire. Now, what wonderful surprises have you got in store for us this season? I promise you, my creations will go down in history. So I, I'm torn with this because on the one hand I really like Ray Barrett's performance here as Francois Lemaire. On the other hand, and this may, this may be a, 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 a gender thing, perhaps, the fashion stuff just leaves me absolutely cold. And we are going to spend much of our time this episode... Does it mean? ...at a fashion show. Are being bugged. Oh, no. 
I don't understand what is this uh, bug. And it's slightly different from the situation we had in Model Spy, because although it was very a very similar setup, we're in the fashion world, here's this French designer guy, um, but there was enough of a... There was enough mystery and action along with that to... I, think I may have found a little secret. ...to um, keep, keep our interest, or keep my interest at least. These very long scenes... I believed it! ...of Penelope and Francois slowly... Pr- not just... Not, it's not just the fashion stuff. It's this business of slowly plodding round the room, discovering bug after bug after bug... I know, oh, and I know there's one or two very quotable lines in here, but I just want to, I really just want to skip over the next ten minutes, because I know I see. there's not really much here. But not quite clever enough. Uh-huh. Peeping Tom. Yeah, close the curtains, that'll take care of that. Under constant surveillance from a long-range television camera. <gasps> oh, oh, mon dieu. Oh, <clears throat> <laughs> All right, Francois. Go ahead. Good. So, well, this Francois guy has developed a great secret. I shall commit my great secret to Pepper. Right. He's going to write it down for us now. Let me see. <sighs> I have designed... A new Francois, form. Stop. Oh. Please show me that pen. Pen examinations. Thunderbirds, everybody. Yeah, this is um an episode that I I feel raises the question: Was Thunderbirds running out of ideas by this point? How long have you had this pen? And I I I'm not entirely sure of the answer because you know, following this we get. Lord Parker's holiday, and then we get Ricochet, which I think is a real return to form. But for there only to be six episodes in the second series, okay, one is a Christmas episode, which kind of explains the fact that it's not all that Thunderbirdsy. But this one, it's not only deathly dull through this fashion world stuff, but also the sky thrust element is very reminiscent of the fire flash stuff that we've seen before. And transmit anything that the writer commits to paper. So I, I just, I don't know. Were they running out of ideas by this point? That it's one of those questions we'll never get answered because um, whether they had more ideas or not, they didn't have a chance to realise them because we only got six episodes of Thunderbirds series two. Meanwhile. Francois's pen has also been revealed to be a bug. But Penelope has written out the message, it will take better men than you to find out our secrets. Bugs in the flowers, peeping Thomases at the windows, pens that send messages. Oh, I need reviving. That's a lovely line. Yes, monsieur. Ah, autons. Yes, ma sweet. Yeah, I, that, that's another thing as well. The... Uh, the look of the fashion models in this uh, story, they are quite terrifying. These are my two leading models, Madeleine and Idri. Try not to scream. And they know your secret? <gasps> Indeed they do. And this at last, my dear Penelope, is my secret. Oh, better check for bugs. Dear Francois. What is it? It's a small box. I mean, am I being unfair? Are there people who really find the fashion world side of this uh, interesting and a, an interesting diversion, and a, a nice break from the norm for Thunderbirds? Or does it get to a point where you almost feel like you're watching the Penelope show? A new five, Penelon. I, I named it after you, Penelope. Oh. I hope you... Which is so far from the basic idea of Thunderbirds that it is it is almost like watching a different series. Penny Long can be made into any kind of costume desire. And I remember feeling this even as a kid the first time I saw this. What, over 30 years ago now? Just why, where did Thunderbirds go? I bring back my Thunderbirds. Why, I could carry a whole wardrobe around with me in my handbag. Ah, yay. Miracles of science. Muriel, just look at this. 
What is it? This looks like an ensemble made of leather. Yes. Though in fact it is made entirely of penelope. Oh, how much? <laughs> Here are some other designs in the collection. All made of penelope. I'm going to wet myself. Yes. Oh, the, these are just drawings of uh, of clothes. Oh, including one of a lady wearing a sort of fabric cloth hat thing. It makes her look like she's got a huge brain. Almost like a Talosian from Star Trek. Ah, <sighs> ah T. How civilized. Ah. Do you take sugar, Lady Penelope? Well, uh, one lump wouldn't do any harm, I suppose. And I think this is also... Um, the reason we're, we're focusing so extensively on the fashion side of things. Oh, there's a bug in the sugar cube. Um, is probably the Andersons, or whoever, wanted to show off the, uh, the skill of their designers. And, you know, that's fine, that's great, but uh, it does overwhelm the story. But no, it's not just the costume designs as well. I think at this point in Thunderbirds you're seeing a kind of evolution of the sets as well. I was noticing... There are some stairs out on um, Francois's balcony leading upwards. Wooden stairs with no handrails and, and as such. And they reminded me a lot of the... Um, so just the top of the Eiffel Tower. The room layouts in uh, Captain Scarlet and Joe 90. I really feel there's a, 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 sh a shift in the visual aesthetics of going into the second series of Thunderbirds that you then see in those shows. But first of all, I shall have to contact a friend. Huh. Yay! London! Well, Skythrust is ready to go into service immediately. The final test... Did we get that certificate of airworthiness? We have. I must offer you my congratulations once again, Mr. Uh, um... <laughs> oh, Mr. Hackenbacker, sir. Um, if you'd like to take it outside... So Savile doesn't know who Brains is. Um, Mr. Hackenbacker? And even Brains doesn't know who Brains is supposed to be because it's an alias. Oh, yeah. That's me. Uh, at number three phone. Of course. But it is surprising how... There's aren't what I've always said. And what is that? People with good intellects often have no head for names. Ah. See, this is a nice guest character. For, in very few scenes. Relatively few scenes, really. But, um... Go ahead, Grolla. Oh, what was I going to say? I've forgotten. Hiram, are you... But, it, yeah, it, but yeah, it is surprising how many people genuinely think that is Brains' actual real name, considering... All the evidence to the contrary in this episode. Got a big favour to ask. I think it's probably more the uh, effects of spin-off media. Meanwhile, we are back in Paris. Mm. I love the streets of uh, Paris in Thunderbirds, and it looks like we are back at the uh, same restaurant we were at for Perils of Penelope. Again, seeing some familiar faces in the uh, customers at this restaurant, including Dick O'Shea again. Oh, but you haven't explained how you came to know Hiram Hackenbacker. Mr. Ashton, you must allow... There's uh, Cass Carnaby, Eddie Kerr. Let me just say that he and I are associates. Well, Hiram's quite a dark horse. Boy, what brains that fellow had. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, now... About the scheme. Of and this is, of course, the. Uh, Seems a lot of trouble to go to just for a fashion show. Only episode of Thunderbirds to feature voices by Paul Maxwell. It is the only one, isn't it? Yeah. Let be all, monsieur. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Obviously, he did uh, Thunderbirds Argo as well. But yeah, nice to see him in uh, an episode. What's this? Oh, is there another bug? I'll get you to read it, lady. There's another of them transmitters bugging you. <sighs> the coffee pot. It must be the coffee pot. Oh, there's another suspicious waiter. I also, and I may have said it before, as much as I love Barry Gray, I hate it when he does this. I'm, I'm not sure if I if I hate it or if it was just overused. I don't understand. That... The waiter... Beep, 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 in music when... You know, when we're sending a, a message. And it came up a lot in Joe 90 as well. And even if you did, he'd tell us nothing. Ooh. Now do you see how important this fashion show is? It's the most important thing in the world. I must switch the location of the preview. World safety depends on it. I, I just... I don't know. 
I don't care. I don't care about clothes. I mean, if you've seen me, you know I don't care about clothes. It's so dull. So, with, um... Okay. Two fairly separate plots... Got a couple of telegrams for you, sir. ...trying to coexist here. Opening night. Everybody wishes everybody else good luck. Okay. Let's get the freight deck loaded. Yes, sir. So that's Mason, the steward. Yeah, very much, uh, very much reminiscent of Zero X close-ups on Skythrust's uh, rear section as it opens a, uh, a ramp for for vehicles to board. Oh dear, I have the butterflies in my stomach every time before a new collection is shown. Deirdre, are the costumes still all right? Perfectly all right. Ah, see, because because Penelon is small, you can get. More clothes into smaller boxes, you see. Again, it's not, it's not enough. Epi it's not enough material to build an episode around. I don't think. Oh yes, belated. I do find this an interesting misfire for the show. I think they've sort of. I, I, you know, I appreciate that they're trying to incorporate essentially, and I may be. I may be overstepping the point here, but I I appreciate that they are kind of Lady Penelope has making an effort here to include perhaps more material. Oh yes, the airline people have done a beautiful conduct. for an audience of 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 girls essentially. Um, all these lovely clothes and uh, and pretty dresses, but uh, I don't know. I think they've gone a bit too far with this. Now remember, Penelope, you must go and get changed as soon as we've leveled out. Don't worry, Francois. The safety of the world depends upon it. How about the music? Is it, is it going to be all right? Mason the steward is taking care of that. He's new to the airline, but I've explained how the queues will go. A new steward? This is a, an interesting point to note as Skythrust takes to the air its first commercial flight and again it it really lacks the the weight and majesty of the same thing with the fire flash in the very first episode the sky thrust should have left paris by now tintin anyway tintin has been allowed out of her cage Hearing about the dress show oh well R remember tintin when you used to be interested in uh, m mechanical engineering the plane aren't you excited brains that lo lobotomy seems to have really taken with you I miss the first series Tintin, and I I suspect that again it's probably a, a consequence of pushing Penelope so much into the foreground. Tintin kind of recedes, but I do wish they'd kept them more as a pair, the way they were in the Cham Cham. I think they complemented each other quite well, and uh, and the slim shaped bodies. <sighs> the skirt flares slightly at the end. Now we are actually watching puppets put on a fashion show. Say, this panel up is a sensation. It's the biggest thing in fabric development since the cotton mill. My god, I'm so excited about this panel on. Alligator attack. This is strictly for wearing after dark. Oh. And number 36. It just keeps going. I've skipped at least two costume reveals here. But it just keeps going, it keeps cutting to the plane and cutting back to the costumes. Uh, is something going to happen? The plane is turning. The plane is turning. Okay. Proceeding now to London. ETA 15 minutes. London control to Skythrop. And here's an old face. On our radar, provisional runway allocation number. It's Lieutenant Burrows from Operation Crash Dive. There's uh, Mr. Hackenbacker here who uh, <coughs> sends his best to you. He's uh, assistant controller in uh, the tower at London Airport. Cute little number he's escorting. They've got just about the biggest bottle of champagne you've ever seen. It's uh, it's clearly the same puppet, and I suspect Ray Barrett is just doing a generic voice without realising this is a character he's played before. But the puppet does look a bit glammed up. It does look like he's uh, he's had a bit of uh, cosmetic surgery done just wait till the since uh, since Operation Crash Dive. This panel on. Where's Madeline got to? Oh, I haven't a clue, darling. I haven't a clue. I haven't seen her since the show. Maybe she died of boredom. Oh, no, she's gone up to the flight deck. May I uh, come through? 
Uh, you don't mind me taking a quick look in the flight deck? Well, I, I guess it'll be all right. Hmm. I'll take her down. What? What here? Oh, you mean the plane? Just where they are. <gasps> oh. Hey, what is this? She's got a gun. This is just the end of part one, my friend. Part two of the journey is just beginning. Oh. I think you'd better give me that. Don't. You're a girl and might do something naughty with the gun. We are not going to London. Thank goodness she waited until after the dress show to do this. I, I couldn't have bared it if she'd interrupted the dress show. Now, set a course. We haven't got time to waste. Uh, don't fool yourself into thinking you'll get away with this on your own. Just I was Steve Zodiac and I can take you any day. Who said I was alone? You idiot! This is an outrage! When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. Ah, oh, Mason the steward is also in on the plot. No one in this aircraft's gonna get hurt. None of they're sensible. There's just been a slight change in plans. It always surprises me when I rewatch this that uh, Deirdre, the other Auton model, wasn't involved in this. I, I remember her being uh, being in on the scheme with with Madeline. The entire collection. <gasps> oh no! This Penelon stuff is too good a haul to lose. Oh, fashion world espionage. It's exciting, damn it. It's not exciting, really. Don't get any clever idea about the radio. It wouldn't do much good anyway. There isn't a person in this world can help you now. Ooh. Well, there's this thing called International Rescue. Don't know if you've ever heard of it. They used to do uh, sort of rescue things in this show called Thunderbirds. But we're now... 32, no, 33 minutes into this episode, and uh, they're still sitting around on Tracy Island. We must do something, Penelope. There is one chance. Ah. Well, it's nice that she finally remembered she's an agent of international rescue. It's Penelope. She's in trouble. I thought it was a little too peaceful around here. Why are we waiting? I thought she'd get herself into Thanks, difficulty God. sooner or later. I'm on my way. You too, Virgil. Yes, sir. I'll contact Alan and send him down. Sure thing. Oh. That was interesting. New footage of Virgil talking as he was uh, lifted up on the painting. Normally they just sit, stick to stock footage, but I guess because Series 2 Virgil looks so different from Series 1, it was worth uh, reshooting that shot. So, Alan gets to... Uh, contact Brains in London to see if he's any idea what's gone wrong. Join Virgil on this mission. Penelope's signal as soon as you can. I love that nobody as yet actually knows what's happened, but because Penelope's involved, it's all hands on deck. This aircraft will soon be tracked down. Now oh. that's where you're wrong. Where I won't stand for this fashion show being interrupted. I have a bearing on Skythrust, Father. Right. Zero, 40 degrees. 18 minutes. 40 degrees, 18 minutes. When we hear from Virgil, we'll be able to pinpoint Skythrust's exact position. Yay, position plotting. Father, right on cue. Zero, two, three... Oh, poor old Gordon. There's another character who's trying his best to stay relevant to the show and uh, failing quite, uh, quite spectacularly. Zero, two, three degrees. Seventeen minutes. For the Sahara. Why? Did you get that, someone? Zero, two, three, point one, seven. What's that? And what's that from? That's, that's, um, that, yeah, that's Captain Grey reporting in Captain Black's position to Colonel White in Manhunt. I'm in number three tracking vehicle. We have a bearing of zero, two, three degrees, 17 minutes. Did you get that, Colonel? Zero, two, three, point one, seven. Yes, thank you, Captain. Sane, sane. Nothing but sane. Stop griping, Ross. Oh. Get on that radio. Strange piece of dialogue to, uh, for them to repeat in a, a later episode. Nice rest. Come in, please. Meanwhile, in the middle of the desert... There's no answer. Are these two... That thing's got a limited range, remember? Naughty gentlemen. This is International Rescue calling Sky Thrust. International Rescue? Who are they? Loud and clear, International Rescue. Request you return to London, Sky Thrust. And if we don't, what then? I'm afraid we'll have to take action to force you to. Oh. Are you trying to kid? Your job is to save lives, not to risk them. That's where you're wrong. Well, I have a feeling we can bluff them for a bit. Brains has an idea. He's telling Virgil about it now. Oh yeah, Brains. Um, ostensibly the uh, 
the focus of this story. What I'm going to ask you to do will sound crazy, but I have a hunch it'll work. T take off your pants, then... I want you to load up a low-velocity, non-explosive missile and take a pot shot at Skythrust's undercart. Ooh. Sounds pretty risky, Brains. Now, uh, now, don't worry, Virgil. It'll be all right. Just trust Mr. Hackenbacker. Okay, then. Hire him. So, Brains has a plan? Eight minutes from touchdown. We won't be able to land. The runway wasn't built for a jet this size. A good try, Ashton, but it won't work. I, um... This is Skythrust. I've got to say, I've thoroughly lost interest by this point. This is Skythrust calling Sahara. Come in, please. It's Sam. Answer it. Hello. And I don't know if it's because of this um, mishmash of ideas that don't work. At least don't work together. Fine. Is everything okay? The repetitive feel of this plane hijacking subplot. Not even international rescue. Or the fact that it's taken international rescue so long to show up. Look, a thunderbird. <gasps> oh, and there's a rare occasion of, uh, yeah, somebody referring to, uh, well, referring to an international rescue vehicle as a thunderbird or the thunderbirds. This time, Alan. F -A Both happened, uh, at least once in the show. And, uh, these shots of Thunderbird 2 banking and weaving around Skythrust. I've got to say, I adore Thunderbird 2. She has never looked so bad as she does in this sequence. She looks so small. There's none of that weight and grandeur that, that you associate with the craft. I'll do it. Oh, she's threatening to put a bullet through Ashton's head. Cliffhanger music tells us she means business. But, uh, I still don't care. Yeah, oh dear, Thunderbird 2. Small and weaving and wobbling. This is Brain's idea, Alan. Right. Let's get back after them. So, weaving and wobbling didn't work. Let's try shooting. I'll keep in the blind spot below their tail. Missile away! Ooh, they blew a hole in it. What was that? The wheel housing's locked. <laughs> no matter how many times I flick the switch, it won't clear. And it means we can't land in the Sahara. Not with an undercart malfunction. Don't try and blind me with science. She blinded me with science! Get Mason in here. You say he knows about these things? I think Mason knows about undercart things. He's a man, you know. I hope you know what you're doing. We may not fool Mason. He could know about the Hackenbacker device. It's a pretty well-kept secret. I'm betting he doesn't know. Yeah, that's something else that hasn't been mentioned much in the story recently. The amazing, uh, unique feature of Skythrust. Mason. Which was, um, again, they, they promote it so heavily at the start of the story. I kind of understand the fact that it hasn't been mentioned for quite a while, because you can't keep doing that throughout a whole story. This very important secret thing, very important secret thing, very important thing, can't tell you. Now, if you can tell me how to land this aircraft on a desert airstrip, miles from anywhere, without wheels, you better tell me now. Young man. All right, head for London. Now wait a minute. Shut up! I've seen a plane go up, and I don't want to be in this one when it does. The rendezvous was with two characters named Ross and Collins. They both had records as long as your arm. They wanted for murder, amongst other things. Why don't you boys play them a call? Ah, oh, that'd be nice. Will do. They're going out to see Ross and Collins. Yeah, these are uh, two villains waiting in the desert, played by... I'm worried, Brain. Well, both played by puppets who always played villains in this show. Nearly always. What is so special about Skytrust? Just wait and see, Tintin. Why can't you tell me now? We're just sitting at the end of a runway doing nothing. We could have an interesting conversation. Touchdown. No. Keep waiting. Oh, dear. How much fuel left? Just under half. Nope. Yeah, it, it is such a night and day difference, this compared to Trapped in the Sky. When you're invested all the way through with the plight of this plane, and you know the bomber board and such, here we have a an undercart malfunction, and there's no... What about it? Can't we ditch some overboard, like Mason said? Well, there's no real 
tension here. You are so worried, why don't you get back in the rear? It's the safest place. I think because we're waiting for some kind of reveal of what this amazing new safety feature is, you know, it's, it's, it's largely the same setup, and in fact in this episode we're spending more time with the people on the plane than we did in Trapped in the Sky. If you watch Trapped in the Sky, you don't really see Tintin and, and anyone else aboard the plane except for the um, for Captain Hansen and the co-pilot. We've spent more time with these people and yet somehow I'm less invested. Perhaps because it is just such a, an obvious reuse of the Trapped in the Sky formula. And that's it, the plane has touched down with no undercart, and here we go! The big secret, it has a, uh... There she goes, take it up to 40,000 feet on 320. A wobbly bit on the back that takes off, containing the fuel, thus ensuring that the fuel does not explode. Wasn't that worth waiting for? And now all we have is a, an out-of-control plane tearing down the runway. <sighs> it also raises the question, uh... You know what, been, what? You know what would have been really useful for this plane that had a problem with its undercart? If you had these like elevator cars that it could land on. No, no, we're not going to do that this time. Thousand gallons. You've got to hand it to Hackenbacker. His ejectable fuel pod to eliminate fire hazard really works. It will revolutionise flying safety. Suddenly, I'm quite prepared to talk about this to anyone who'll listen, including looking directly at the camera to tell the audience how wonderful it is. Penelope. Fine. It was no worse than one or two conventional landings I've experienced. But yeah, why not Why not send Thunderbird 2 back to London and deploy the elevator cars? Okay, granted, they probably weren't on board, but that was like the ideal chance to use them again. Why are you not using them? What about the accomplices? <sighs> anyway. I'm sure they'll be well taken care of, Francois. And by taken care of, I of course mean murdered. Yeah, I never liked the idea. Stuck out here in the desert. Quiet! It is a bit random as well, these guys just dumped in the middle of nowhere with a truck. Waiting to meet Skythrust. Here comes an aircraft. And remember, use a live missile this time, Alan. We want no survivors, Alan. They're coming in again! Yeah, so uh, we're coming up to a moment where International Rescue are going to open fire with live ammunition on uh, on two guys. Because, you know, Jeff Tracy was all about saving human life, no matter what the cost. Um, we've been told that these are very naughty men, though, so let's blow up their car, leaving them stranded in the desert. <laughs> Presumably with no way to get home. Mission accomplished, Father. Presumably no water. Well, that just about wraps the whole thing up. Another job well done. We killed two men. Most of all. Well, we could have brought them to justice, but I prefer swift, brutal shooting at them from the sky justice. Air safety. Much more satisfying. America, have you anything you'd like to say? Hmm? Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, why don't we all go over to the starlight roof and have a bite to eat? I'm starving. I do like this ending with uh, all of our... We still got that bottle of champagne to open. Vintage 1993. Our good characters waiting in the, the airport control tower. Did I hear someone mention champagne? Yes, Francois. Just follow Penelope. Oh, the dearest girl. I would follow her to the edges of the earth. Miss How does anyone get into and out of this tower, by May the way? I escort you to the starlight roof? Why, certainly I'd be delighted, Mr. Hackenbacker. Ah. You know, you can call me Hiram. Why, thank you, Hiram. Ah, I like that. I like that. That's a nice uh, note to end the episode on with a bit of flirting between uh, Brains and, and Tintin. Uh, well, not, it's not even flirting, it's just a bit of affectionate banter. Anyway, that was Alias Mr. Hackenbacker, and I think you can tell by the way that I've not only been talking about this in fairly negative terms, but I feel I've really struggled to keep going by the end of this. This is, um... You know, I didn't remember it as a particularly good episode. I'm surprised how how hard it's been for me to get through this today. Maybe watching an episode 
just just sitting there passively absorbing it as opposed to doing a, a commentary in real time. They're, they are two different things, really. But this one saps all my energy and enthusiasm by about the 10 minute mark. I think it is because we've just got these ideas that we've either ideas that we've seen before or ideas that don't really fit the Thunderbirds world throw them all together and we just end up with something that feels old and tired and and predictable so yeah apologies to anyone who likes this one but there's very little here for me to enjoy unfortunately sorry <laughs>